So let's stick with the budget analysis and where our economy is going with Stephen Smith, who was Chief Economist at Deloitte Access Economics. Stephen, we spoke to you just before the budget when you were getting it all set up. And effectively, um, do you think that some of the outcomes that were what you imagined pre-budget? Uh, look, Ross, a little bit more positive than what we thought, to be honest. The long-run numbers, uh, a lot of the structural deficit that we saw there, the 2% of GDP that was the big problem in the, in the budget unveiled in October, uh, a lot of that has been um, revised to you know, much smaller uh, structural deficits over the next 10 years, uh, most of that due to interest costs but also the NDIS. Uh, so a much rosier picture painted last night by the government uh, than what we had initially expected. OK, there's a big drop-off in economic growth over the next 12 months, which people should be reasonably alarmed about because that could lead to an increase in unemployment. But the fact of the matter is, if the government is, or Treasury is even a little bit wrong about that, that they've overshot it, it really does mean that the budget is likely to be back in surplus next year. Look, that's very possible. Uh, the, the, the deficit next year uh, down to about 14 billion, 13.9 billion uh, in 23 24. Uh, we saw an enormous increase in revenue over the next uh, four years unveiled in the budget last night 130 billion in additional revenue, mostly due to company tax receipts and also uh, personal income tax receipts. So if the labour market stays strong, if, uh, if unemployment doesn't tick up as much as, as Treasury expect, if the 4% wage growth that, that Treasury anticipate does come through, uh, and if commodity prices stay high, I, I certainly think it's a possibility uh, that a surplus could be delivered next year as well. And, and Ross, it's interesting that uh, the, the deficit of $13.9 billion projected for next year, I mean, the government did have net spending of $12 billion uh, next year, just as it is. And so, you know, without that, they would have got close already to a surplus next year. OK, the other thing also, we're looking here at the unemployment forecast. Now, you know, they've got unemployment really rising pretty rapidly from three and a half to four and a quarter and then to four and a half percent. But let's be honest, again, if they've overshot this and it ends up at four percent, say, for example, because there is still demand for labour out there, then that also is going to feed straight back into the bottom line and straight back into the prospects of a surplus next year. Absolutely. It's certainly possible. We think the unemployment rate assumptions are, are, are reasonably right, but we do think that the wage growth forecasts in the budget are a little bit ambitious at 4% uh, to the June quarter uh, next year. Uh, so, you know, if, if that was to hold, uh, that could certainly uh, see uh, the budget um, sort of pushing close to, to surplus. And taxes from individuals now accounts for uh, more than 50% of total taxation uh, revenue from the government. That's, you know, that, that's obviously quite significant. Um, income tax, uh, personal income tax, really the swing factor for the government in terms of where it, it draws its revenue from. Uh, the other one, of course, uh, company tax, a smaller share of uh, revenue overall, but uh, higher commodity prices... Uh, next year, you know, certainly very feasible that they could beat the Treasury uh, forecasts. So, Stephen, basically paint me a picture over the next 12 months. What this budget last night tells us about how Australian families and Australian businesses are going to cope and how they're going to fare, what they're going to feel over these next 12 months. What does the budget tell us? Well, we're seeing a deteriorating economic environment overall, a much slower uh, pace of economic growth over the next 12 months. We, we do think the unemployment rate will tick up and we do see negative real wage growth still as, as inflation uh, sort of comes back down uh, to within the target band but, uh, you know, but, but still remains higher than, uh, than wage growth. So a, a, a slower economic environment, um, households already doing it tough, doesn't matter if you've got a mortgage or if you rent, there's um, considerable squeeze on household budgets and only some, some very modest... Uh, handouts by the government last night in terms of its cost of living package. Lots of little small measures across a range of uh, a range of areas, from job seeker to uh, parenting payments and alike. Uh, for some individuals, that will add up to a meaningful uh, make a meaningful difference over the next 12 months. For most, it won't. Uh, the government could have done more there if it also took some tougher decisions to save, uh, and so that the, the net impact on uh, on the budget was not as large. It's going to be fascinating just to see just how this plays out over the next 12 months because what's clear, and we played a grab earlier of Josh Frydenberg, uh, of, 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 sorry, of, of the Treasurer, um, to, to, um, Jim Chalmers, and basically saying there that, you know, they have banked these savings. 
And I think that's one of the big keys. So we're going to find out in due course. We'll stay close to you. Stephen Smith, many thanks for your time today. Thanks, Rose.